Photography is an expensive hobby. To get a decent camera, you can be looking at spending thousands of dollars on a body and a lens, but in this case, I paid quite a bit less for this camera. Okay, quite a lot less. I paid just $9 for this camera and it's waterproof. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm surprised at just how much I like it. I got this Lumix DMC FT5 a few years ago when I was working at a department store and it was an X demo camera with no battery and after all markdowns, it somehow came down to just $9. I haven't really used it much in the past few years, but I recently decided to try it out and I'm actually really surprised at the quality of this camera. I'll be showing you some samples in this video of what this camera is capable of and watch till the end to get all my thoughts on this tiny little waterproof powerhouse. Let's talk specs. The FT5 has a 16.1 megapixel CMOS sensor with a 28 millimeter to 128 millimeter full frame equivalent lens that has Leica branding on it which is good. <laughs> In doing research for this video, I found out that the newest model of this camera is the FT6, which oddly, outside of a few different bits of text on the body, appears absolutely identical to the FT5. I can only imagine this was an incremental upgrade, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. There is also the FT7, which is um, a little bit more hardcore than this one. It goes down to 20 meters of waterproofness and it has like an external viewfinder, which I think is really, really cool. So I'd actually love to try that camera out um, at some point in the future. So one thing that I really love about this camera is that 28 millimeter lens at the wide end. It is like a waterproof Ricoh GR. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I love the Ricoh GR. The, the FT5 came out in 2013 and the FT6 in 2015. So I've been testing this camera for this review and I thought what better way to test it than to take it to the beach. And the beach is exactly where this camera belongs because this little Lumix is waterproof up to 13 meters and it is so tough. Panasonic has plenty of experience producing very tough gadgets. So when I was a kid, I, um, I always wanted one of their tough book laptops. Um, I think like police departments and like fire brigades and like tradies and stuff use them. Uh, I thought the idea of this indestructible laptop was just so cool. And in the same way, there's something to be said about having a camera which is capable of withstanding so much abuse. Seeing as normally cameras are fairly fragile objects. Also, be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more great photography content. One of the things that has really surprised me with this beautiful blue camera is just how sharp the lens is. So it's definitely not a professional's camera as you don't even have an ability to shoot raw, but the lens developed by Leica is actually fantastic. And with a little bit of tweaking to the JPEGs, you can get the photos looking pretty damn unbelievable. I'm actually really impressed with it. The colors and tones that you can achieve with this camera are actually great. And that telescopic zoom works fairly well for super far away objects as well. Um, over there in the distance, if you can see, oh, it's cold. Over there, if you can see in the distance, is actually the Spirit of Tasmania. It's a little ferry. And I'll take some photos with my, with the digital zoom mode sort of set to the furthest I can. And it actually comes out all right. Like, so you do get, um, you do get a, a very, you do get basically an amount of optical zoom and then it does crop it a little bit for digital zoom too. Um, it is noticeably worse quality when you start getting into that digital zoom, um, but it does work in a pinch. I recently went away on a little trip to just down the coast, uh, just to Rosebud here in Melbourne with, uh, with a bunch of friends for a friend's birthday. And I used it to capture some great action shots of my friends throwing a ball in the water. And I also managed to get some really cool underwater shots as well. Ready? Go. The autofocus is fairly quick and it's actually somewhat responsive as well. And in the sports mode, I noticed that it was actually decent at locking on in photos. You just really needed decent enough light. And you know, I like the buttons. Uh, they're nice and clicky and responsive even underwater. And the insanely quick startup time, which you know is great as well because it means you can just pull this out of your pocket, bang, turn the camera on and it's ready to shoot almost immediately, which is awesome. There's no lens that sort of has to come out or anything. There's no moving parts, which, Makes this a really, really good camera as like a snapshot camera when you want to take it out on like a night out and stuff. And you're, you know, you might not be of the most sober mind. So you don't really want to be having something that has moving parts in it that might get damaged or anything. So this, a camera like this, amazing. Keep it in your back pocket. 
and you know, if you drop it or if anything happens to it, it's all good, no issues. And it's really quick. So quick and easy to get the shot. So you're never gonna miss photos either. In terms of manual controls, they are fairly finicky to use. You also only really have an option of two aperture settings. So you either have F3.3 or F10 at the wide end at 28 mil, or you get F5.9 and F18 at the tele end. Um, so that's the 120, 128 mil end there as well, which is actually the first time that I've ever actually seen anything like this. It's, it's, I thought it would be, I thought it's a bit weird that you can't change the aperture more than just those two. I don't really have a lot of experience with cameras like this though. So maybe that's just standard. I'm not sure, but you can actually change the ISO. Uh, the, the way you change the ISO is similar to the Leica M8. So you do go into your settings and in the settings, you, um, you just change it manually. There's no like, there's no shortcut to change the ISO like there would be on a, on a sort of more sort of pro oriented camera. And the ISO performance obviously is about as you would expect for a small digital camera from 2013. So not amazing. <laughs> um, so honestly, I just used the pre-program modes and I was actually shocked at how decent the photos kept turning out. So there's a mode in here that the number the like the first mode that it has is called intelligent auto, which I would normally balk at using an auto mode. I think that's, you know, just shoot manual and figure it out. But I said this thing to, to auto and I was, it was pretty good. Like it, it sort of, you know, like I was really impressed with how the photos kept turning out. And sometimes I did need to put the flash on manually to make a certain scene lit up properly, but otherwise it was really, really good. And just getting back to that build quality. So it is excellent. Uh, the camera feels unbelievably dense and well-made and it has a nice red um, not to swim indicator showing that if you don't properly lock this door, um, the battery door that, uh, you know, water's gonna get in and you can't use it underwater. It also incessantly warns you about how you need to make sure that this lock is locked. Like it will, you know, it will tell you, it's like, hey, lock the door, it's not locked. It's also made in Japan as well, which is cool too. So this camera is, is beautiful. It's, it's an all metal body. It's really, really nicely made. All metal, at least face plate and back plate. And then it's got the plastic sort of, it's like a sandwich in the middle of plastic. And you know, speaking of battery, uh, it was initially advertised as having 370 shots per charge, but I batted 189 photos before my camera died during my trip with my friends away. And I would say it depends on how much flash you're using and how much you're actually reviewing the photos. But you know, this could also be due to my third party battery that I have in this camera. Um, as when I did buy this camera for $9, <laughs> um, it did not actually include anything. So not even a battery. This camera represents a wildly different market of cameras that I am typically used to using. It has a GPS, a barometer, and a depth sensor, and it has been designed for the adventurer as a bulletproof camera that can work in any conditions and doesn't really require much tweaking or dialing in of settings in order to get fairly decent images with. I think that's great if you're in a situation where you don't have time to deal with thinking about settings, like you're underwater, you're diving, you're at a party, <laughs> you're doing anything that is like, you know, where in situations where you might not want to be fiddling with settings and you kind of just want it to look good. Yeah, so that's it's great for that. Um, and the best bit that I found actually that I was really blown away by is that when I applied the presets for my new preset pack, link in the description, the, the photos just looked awesome. So I was actually surprised at how flexible these JPEG files were. And I know, I know, it is sacrilegious to shoot JPEG, but in this case, I had no choice as this camera does not shoot raw. So, what is there not to like? Well, as I said, it doesn't shoot raw, which is a shame. I think if this did shoot raw, oh man, I mean the quality, like the dynamic range that you'd be able to get out of the photos would be even better. And one of the things that I don't really like is that it does, I don't know how to describe this, but it almost seems like it applies a weird filter or maybe it's just a JPEG processing, but it kind of has like a weird smudgy look to the photos in certain circumstances. I looked up some reviews from the time and it seems like this is a pretty like common complaint, but I just talked it down to being character. And while it does shoot video, um, surprisingly, I would not be using this as a video camera. That being said though, the stereo, it does have stereo microphones up the top and they actually sound fantastic. Um, it's actually not too bad. The audio quality out of this camera is pretty impressive, but the lack of manual control is a shame as well. I think if this camera just had a little bit more fine tuning on the manual control side of things, like just being able to really just dial in that aperture more than just two, you know, sort of predetermined settings, I think that'd be fantastic. But I do understand that this camera was designed for a different audience. It's a different audience to people who want total manual control over their camera. So can't really criticize it too much on that front. And overall, I love this little blue camera. I, it has heaps of soul and it's just a fun little throw around thing that will withstand anything you can throw at it. And 
anyone that I showed this camera to and I told that I paid just $9 for, they were always so impressed with the quality of it. And yes, I do realize that this camera was not always $9. Um, I believe it was nearly 400 Australian dollars at launch, but you can find them on eBay for around 150 or so. And I believe it's actually really great value for money. And it's an excellent little snapshot camera, which you can comfortably take on anything you throw at it. Not to mention just how much fun it is to take underwater photos because I've never done it before until I got this thing and I'm definitely really enjoying it. I think it's really cool. So what do you guys think? Would you use a dedicated tough digicam for your next summer holiday? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Bye. The most ridiculous person right now because I have three cameras on me. I have this waterproof Lumix that I'm testing. I've got, I've got the Instago 360 on my hat to give you that POV shot. And I'm gonna put this action four on my chest.